Hello and welcome to the Integration Best Practices uh, Video 3, Best Practices Around Inbound Web Services. Uh, my name is John Anderson. I'm the Solution Architect with our Pre-Sales Organization. And with me, I have um, Sir David Gatley of our Integration Partners Program. He's a Senior Certification Engineer. You want to say hello to everybody, David? How's it going, guys? <laughs> All right, great. Well, today we're going to cover a few points of uh, best practices around inbound web services and uh, some of the some of the areas that we hope to cover are uh, our direct web services uh, inside of the platform and then talk about the web service import set uh, web services uh, that are available then we'll quickly just discuss in brevity when to use our direct web services versus uh, the web service import set functionality uh, moving on from that, we'll cover, we'll, we'll perform a demo actually of integrating um, a third party system, setting up our instance so that a third party system can push data into ServiceNow uh, using our best practices around the import set uh, and the web service import set layer itself. We'll also cover configuring the proper roles for uh, providing external access into. Uh, our web service interfaces that we create and also show you how to view the raw third-party data that's coming into the instance uh, in case we ever need to troubleshoot that data going forward. So with that let's first talk about uh, our direct web service API. Uh, the ServiceNow instance is built on a database obviously and the ServiceNow platform by default creates a, a web service API, API for every table inside the system. So if you were to modify an existing table and add more fields to that table, or if you were to create a table of your own, you automatically would have uh, both SOAP and REST based APIs that allow CRUD capability. So write access, read access, create access, delete access. You would automatically have that access through web services on your database table. Now this is great uh, unless your third party starts pushing data into your table that does not fit your schema maybe, or, or the format for that table. Maybe they start pushing choice values that are not really choice values for your table. There's no way for you to really qualify that data. And so what ServiceNow has done is they've created a staging web service that you can build out for tables and what this staging web service does we, we call these web service import sets and they leverage the same import set technology and transform map technology that we mentioned in our prior trainings with uh, data sources and import sets uh, these staging areas allow third parties to push data into the staging table in their own format and with their their own schema and then we're able to map that schema and transform that data such that it fits the schema uh, of our target tables within the system. It allows us to um, automatically determine if we need to do inserts or updates on records. It also helps us to qualify that data coming in to determine if this is really a record that qualifies to be within our database table. And, and so these two uh, sets of APIs offer um, a really powerful set for our integrators to interact with our system. So really the big question uh, comes to be when do I use a direct web service uh, interface versus the web service import uh, interface? And really the best practice for this is that if you're going to do any type of query on a table within ServiceNow you use the direct web service interface that we offer. If you're going to uh, write data to a table, uh, either inserting or updating data to a table, uh, we, we recommend through our best practices that you go through a web service import set and handle that transformation layer and qualification uh, logic to be, to be able to handle that data before it resides in the target table. So that's, that's the best practice rule of thumb uh, and we expect our, our partners and, and integrators to follow that rule uh, as, we, as we perform these integrations. 
So with that being said, and with that quick overview, I'm going to turn it over uh, to David now to actually go through the demo and to show some of the best practices as, as we set up this web service uh, for our third party uh, research firm. Uh, David, do you mind explaining the situation that we're trying to cover here and then do you want to jump right into uh, the demo? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, John. So the internet research application is our own application that we're outsourcing with a third-party company to bring data into. Uh, our integration that we've created, which is the Acme integration, is used to capture that data through a, West, uh, a REST web service and populate our application internet research. So to begin, I'm going to create a new web service that will end up residing within Acme Research and it will capture some of the best practices uh, that John outlined in the earlier slides. Um, so I'll be going through uh, the numerous setup steps and focusing on the key best practices that we run across along the way here. So to do this, I'm going to create a new web service. And we're going to label this um, Acme Inbound Research. A couple things to note here. I'm going to select the Copy Fields from Target Table option and pick uh, Research Item, which is my target table, if I can spell it correctly. Uh, from here, I'm going to cl click Create, which will create my Import Set Table which we named in Acme Inbound Research. So this is essentially a web service interface that you're creating for this staging table that, that you're going to be working with. Is that right, David? Correct. This will end up becoming the endpoint of our web service. So we have our, our newly created import set table here, and we're about to create our transformation map. But before we do that, one thing worth noting, unless you have an uh, explicit need for business rules to be run during your transformation map, um, you don't need to check run business rules. However, if you do know that there will be some business rules that you are required to run during your transformation map, go ahead and check this. For now, I'll leave it checked, uh, but know that moving forward in the future, if you don't need this, it's better to keep it unchecked. Uh, from here, we're going to select Auto Map Matching Fields, and this will go ahead and uh, provide us our, our mapping fields. Uh, from here we can define some coalesce items if we know uh, we're looking at certain constant fields that are going to be coming across with our web service um, and we want to decide between an update and a create. Uh, in this we know that uh, we're pulling in data from external websites and we might be pulling in multiple records from the same website. So we probably have more than one coalesce field, uh, one for the URL as well as one for the text. This really tells us that we can have numerous records from the same URL, but the text, if they're different, will create two separate records. One other thing worth noting here, I, I do know that my parameter in my web service is actually u underscore comment here in my source field, so I'm going to go ahead and make that match. I guess that is one problem, David, of using that auto map matching fields. Uh, that's a shortcut. Uh, but sometimes it does get it wrong. It, it tries to match the best that it can according to those naming conventions. But it's always important to look at that mapping just to make sure that it guessed properly. So, so you just fixed uh, one of the incorrect guesses there. And since we have that field, we can probably remove the redundant comments section. Yeah, that comments one is a journal list. It's, it's a static. It, it, nothing's going to come into that field. So yeah, you're right. Let's go ahead and remove that as well. And from there, there's one more item we need to keep up to date, which is the correlation display field. I know that since this is coming from an external uh, website, um, that all that data for categorization and organization, we want to go ahead and, and label this with a source script. So we're going to go ahead and give this uh, answer equals Acme. Which will label each inbound item from this web service with Acme. So you're saying everything that comes in through this web service will will assume is coming from uh, our, our outsourcing company Acme? Correct. Is that right? Okay. Correct. And this will help us better categorize that data. 
So now we have our, our fields mapped and our, our transform table created. There's a couple more things we need to do here. I'm going to go ahead and click update. So this will bring me back out. I'm going to go back into my, my web service import set. Here it is, Acme inbound research. And from here, I want to go ahead and make sure that the field links are, are set properly. So right now we have several field links that are set to the default value of 40 characters. That's probably too small for things like text, URL, uh, comments. So if I didn't change these to a larger value, we would truncate that data as it came in. So it's a best practice to come in here and ensure that your field lengths are set to the appropriate size. All right, and I'll go ahead and t update those changes. Now I noticed, David, that there's a, a WSDL uh, here. I, I thought you said we were going to be doing a REST integration with Acme did we do something wrong there? No, so it automatically creates our WSDL in case we were using a SOAP integration for this. Yeah, so so even though so we're going to show that WSDL in case we are using SOAP, uh, but both SOAP and REST-based interfaces are automatically generated with this process. Correct. Okay, with, great. With any custom table, you get that functionality. All right, so now my transformation map is is constructed as well as my import set table. I do want to, for organization and, and just general best practice, take this module that's been created and, and assign that to my integration application. So to do that, I right click on the star next to my module name, click Edit Module. So to assign this to my new application, simply click the magnifying glass, type in my application name, Acme Research. And now I'll find my new web service underneath my Acme Research uh, integration application. So this is a, a great way to organize all of your work into the same place, make it much easier for any admin users to come in and find all the relevant pieces that exist within this integration. So with this new import set table created, we need to create an ACL uh, for our, our web service to have permission to create this data within ServiceNow. To do that, I simply right-click on the import set table, uh, personalize the security value rules for, for this table. I may need to have elevated privileges, which it looks like I do right now. Uh, if I don't, I simply click this and provide a security admin uh, access to my, my session. So from here, I simply click New to create a new access control. I select the table that we just created. And this is the import set table then. is that correct? correct. Okay. Uh, I'll leave none and I'll provide a description just so I know what exactly this access control is doing. So I'll click save which will keep me within the record and allow me to provide a role for this ACL. So we're going to select the integration role Acme Research Admin. And this role we created in an earlier training, didn't we, when we were setting up uh, the integration menu, I believe? Correct. All right, so now our ACL exists on this table, and, and our inbound web service should have no problem creating records within our table. So uh, one clarification I'd like to make, David, is that um, we're not setting an access control for the web service to create the record. Rather, we're creating this access control so that uh, a user with with the role we created, we'll have access to this web service. Uh, the web service will then be able to create the record. But this is to provide the access for an external user to reach uh, and, and trigger this web service. So one thing worth pointing out here, we just selected this role for our ACL. However, Acme Research Admin is still missing some key permissions. Uh, specifically, it needs to inherit the REST role in order to allow REST messages. So to do that, we'll find our role. And we can see here within contains role, the REST service has been added. 
And that's not by default. I think we did that a little bit earlier, but it's good to point out that if you're going to be using REST, uh, a REST web service, and your role will need to have that uh, REST uh, service role contained with it. If you're going to use a SOAP interface, then you'd want to include that SOAP role All right. instead. And in that case, you'd simply select Edit and find the role you want to add. So as a part of the integration, uh, we need to create a, a user that the integration web service will, will authenticate with when it's coming into our instance. So to do this, we simply create a new user within the system. I'm going to pass these credentials along to John here in a moment. He's going to use them to authenticate against our instance. So these are the credentials that I'm going to pass along to John or our third-party company to, to log in with their web service and, and gain access. One thing worth noting, I need to uh, provide web service access only to this user. This limits the user account to being used only within the web services. So now that our new user has been created, we need to assign the web service role to that user, specifically the, the role that we just modified in the previous step. So if I find my Acme Research Admin, which contains the REST role, this user now has permission to come in with a REST web service and post data into our instance. So David, I think it's important to note that the, role, the, the roles that we set up in this integration get captured in the update set, is that correct? That is correct. The user record itself does not. So, so typically, if we want to capture uh, the security components. We do the access controls against the role. We set up the role, capture that in the update set. When it's applied to the, the target instance, uh, that is when we create the user and assign the role uh, to that user. Is that exactly typically how you see it? Okay. Exactly. Since those users won't be created, that'll be part of the installation and configuration guide. Great. All right, so with that, we're ready to go ahead and, and pass in some data. So I'm going to bounce this over to John. He'll play the part of our, our third party who's we're paying uh, not enough money to for the incredible work we're getting uh, to go ahead and push some data into our instance. So with, with that, John, would you like to show us how to get data into our instance? All right. Thank you, David. I'll, I'll represent the third party called Acme Research. And what my job is as an employee of Acme Research is I'm doing research uh, for David's firm. And currently, we're researching uh, REST APIs and, and different um, a, uh, integration uh, technologies out there and submitting what we find um, out to David's uh, company um, so that they can, they can see the type of research we're doing and include it with the research that they're doing as well. So in this case, uh, I'm in my company, and, and I have special software that adds uh, additional functionality to my browser. And um, I'm, I'm reading through the, the, this documentation about the supported HTTP methods. And, and I think, you know what, uh, we want to make sure that, that these are the, all the method, methods that we want to support. So I'm just going to highlight that. And I'm going to use our, our, our company software to, to copy that information. And, you know, Brad is, is really good on, on the REST topic, so I'm going to assign this to Brad. I'm going to say, Brad, uh, can you look into the various HTTP methods that are available and see if this list is sufficient? And I'm going to go ahead and submit that here in my tool. Now, David, I'm going to turn it back over to you so that you can um, check out our research uh, through your, your company's uh, ServiceNow instance. Okay, thanks, John. So there's a couple great features that going through this import set method actually enables us to do. So before I check to see from our end result, I want to actually see what data is coming into my instance. So to do that, I simply come in to my integration. Uh, take a look at my import set. And from here, I have a, an option to look at my input rows. What this is showing us is each message that has actually come in through our web service, as well as some of the data that came across with it. So from in here, we can see 
uh, the selected text that came in, who it's assigned to, and more importantly, we can actually see what happened, the state of this message, and if there was an error, any comments here, what happened, why it didn't get posted, uh, what might have happened. So this is great if, if uh, your customer wants to know uh, which data is coming in to their instance, where it's coming from, uh, and really provide a, a, a full end-to-end -end picture of, of where these, this data external from ServiceNow is originating from, and additionally where it's going. Um, so from there we can actually check our, our target application. Uh, so from here I should be able to click and see this new item assigned to Brad. If I click into this I'll, I'll see the URL that we came from, I'll see the selected text, um, and, and all the other parameters that we passed in with our web service. So as we can see, this, this uh, third-party application is working great. It's coming in exactly where we expect it to. Uh, if anything needed to happen, we could manipulate that data. Um, and, and John, is there anything else you'd like to add to this? No, I think, uh, I think that covers it very well. Maybe we should just summarize then uh, some of the best practices that we saw uh, as you were building out this interface. So David, just a recap on those best practices. Uh, first of all, the direct web services API that's, that ServiceNow provides really should just be used for queries with its interaction to database tables. And if we want to write data to tables, that's when we leverage the web service import set um, that you created actually um, and demoed for that third party to post its, its data to. So that's great. Um, also, you also showed that you really need to check when you're creating those web service import sets to make sure that you do have the proper field lengths. They're going to default to 40, and if you know that there are field lengths that might be larger, to set the appropriate size on those. Also, I think very important, and one thing that often gets forgotten is, is all around the security, um, you should be creating an appropriate role specific to the integration that, that you've developed. And, and that role should be provided in your update set so that when uh, in, this is installed on instances, one of their configuration steps is to create a user and assign that role to that user so that they can then give that user account to the third party. So they're not opening up an admin account for a third party that, that they don't necessarily need to trust. Um, and then finally, with, with any... Um, uh, web services that we create or UI pages or, or, or any artifacts that are created for our integration. Uh, as you demonstrated, we need to create some ACLs around those artifacts uh, to protect that data and allow uh, your role to connect into those, uh, those artifacts that you've created. So, so yeah, I think uh, we've, we've covered all those best practices. Uh, thank you everybody for, for attending this training. Uh, this has been video number three of the best practices series for integrations. This was covering inbound web services. Watch out for upcoming best practice videos on outbound web services, so sending uh, data out from an instance out to a third party, as well as uh, exporting data uh, from a third party uh, system. And then finally, for those that are involved in our certified integration partner program, uh, David is going to provide an integration certification program best practices uh, demo video as well. So, so thank you for joining us and, and keep your eye out for these upcoming videos.